Happy night, theater. The Sybil Thorndike Festival, in which Dame Sybil stars in some of her favourite plays. Today we present her in The Distaff Side, in which she takes the role of Evie Millward, the part she created in 1933. With her in this radio adaptation by Raymond Rakes, we feature Lydia Sherwood, Jane Wenham, Griselda Harvey and Mary O'Farrell. The Distaff Side. A Comedy for Women by John Van Druten. Oh, I'm going to switch off the wireless. I don't think I could stand the comedy of women after the week I've just been through. Here it is, Saturday night again. How quickly time flies. And what a week it's been. And all centering round Mother's 75th birthday last Thursday. The day before yesterday. Lunch. Come along. It's my party, and I'm not going to be kept waiting on my birthday. Now come along, Liz. Coming, Mother. Come along, Nelly. Coming, Mother. Come along, Evie. Coming. Oh, dear. I wish we had a few more men in the family. Come along, all of you. Liz and Nellie and I. We three sisters were all there on Thursday at her birthday party. And we always shall be, I suppose, each year until she dies. And Mother will go on treating us as if we were still children. And now the birthday is all over. It is Saturday. Mother is asleep at last in her room. And here am I, alone in my bedroom just sitting and looking at the photograph of my husband, Henry. It always stands on my dressing table. Oh, what a good photograph it was. Am I lonely as I sit here looking at it? Is this loneliness or is it just solitude? What was it my sister Liz said to me on Monday night just after she arrived? Lovely being here, Evie. Oh, it's lovely having you, Liz. This is a nice house. There's something complete about it, something fulfilled. The what? Life you've led in it, I suppose. Just as you are a sort of complete person. What is it about you? <laughs> I haven't an idea. Oh, Eve, darling, it is fun to be here. Well, that was comforting. But I'm afraid my sister Liz always did exaggerate a bit. And especially this week, with all her troubles about her two men, with Gilly, as we call Gilbert, and with that Belgian. What did my son Roland call him? A little bearded so-and-so kept calling Aunt Liz, Liz, and kept saying, a tanto, a tanto, a tanto. Yes, but then Liz wasn't the only one this last week who'd been bothered with two men. What about my dear Alex? Has your daughter got a young man? She's got several, Liz. Anything serious? Well, I think there is a little situation on the horizon at the moment. Oh, tell me. Another time. Oh, all right. But the little situation about my daughter Alex assumed alarming proportions as the week went on. And what with that, and my sister Liz and her complications, and Mother's birthday, all coming in the same week, well, is it surprising I can't face a comedy about women on the wireless tonight? And to think that all the trouble only started last Monday evening, about 10 o'clock. I remember how foggy it was, and both my children were still out in it. And Mother's temper is never too reliable round bedtime. Evie, I wish your children would come in, or one of them anyhow, and bring his aunt with him. Do you suppose Roland's still hanging about at Victoria Station? And what's Liz want to cross Dover Ostend this time of year for? And what's she been doing in Brussels anyway? But, Mother dear, you know I don't know. We had that out when our telegram came. And what about this fog? Well, I can't help the fog. Come in. It's 
ten o'clock, madam. Here's Mrs. Venable's milk. Oh, thank you, Rose. Oh, Rose. Yes, madam. Uh, Miss Alex not back yet. I haven't heard her, madam. Thank you. Very good, madam. Now, where is Alex? She's late, too. Well, it's only just ten. It's seven minutes past. She may be your daughter, but I shall speak to her. I can't think what she does with her time gallivanting. Hello, Mother. Hello, Alex, dear. Good evening, Grandma. And where have you been all day? Oh, out and about. You didn't mind my not coming back to dinner, Mother. Of course not, Alex, dear. And where did you go? I met Charles Hubbard at the cocktail party, Grandma, and he took me on to dinner. Charles Hubbard? That's a new one, isn't it? About two weeks. Your other young man rang up for you. Who? Oh, yes, I was going to tell you. Toby Chedwin. Toby? What did he want? Anything special? Yes, something very special. He's got some news for you. What? Well, he wants to tell you himself. He's coming round later, and I said he'll be back about ten. Oh, but I'm going out again. I've only come home to change, and Charles is calling for me. We're going to a party. This new young man seems very attentive. He is, Grandma. Very attentive. Well, I hope he's tidier than your other friend. <laughs> Who is he, anyway? He's Seton Hubbard's son. And who may Seton Hubbard be? The playwright, Grandma. I was in his last play. You saw me in it. Looked for you in it, you mean? Oh. <laughs> so he wrote that, did he? And the son takes you out to dances. Oh, perhaps he'll get his father to write a bigger part for you next time. That's passed through my mind, too. And what does the son do when he's at home? He almost never is, Grandma. He's much too social and important. Oughtn't Aunt Liz to be here by now? Well, Roland telephoned from the station that the train was going to be late, owing to the fog. Well, uh, I'm going to bed. Alex, child, come and look in on me when you're dressed, and let me see your party frock. I will, Grandma. I won't say goodnight to you, Evie. You'll come up with Liz, I expect. It's unless she's too late. You mustn't lie awake too long, Mother. So wouldn't it be better to wait and see her in the morning? You bring her up when she comes, Evie. And you and Alex needn't make faces behind my back, either. Are you waiting up for Aunt Liz? Mm. I'm quite thrilled at the idea of seeing her again. Mm, so am I. You know, she used to be my idea of everything mm. that was smart and attractive. Roland and I used to think <laughs> she was no better than she should be. Well, in a sort of way, I suppose you're right. <laughs> I think that was when we first discovered that Uncle Fred had divorced Aunt Liz on Gilly's account. I suppose it was because of me that Gilly never came here with Liz while Father was alive. In a way, yes. Father resented Gilly, didn't he? Well, he resented the position for Liz. He didn't blame Liz for going off with Gilly, did he? Not really. She'd been very unhappy with her husband. Oh, but Liz should never have married Fred. It was always Gilly she wanted. Did she know him before? Mm. They met at a dance soon after she came out. Then when they discovered he had a wife, Grandma and Grandpa stopped Liz seeing him, and she made up her mind to marry the first good-looking man who asked her. <sighs> when Gilly turned up again ten years later, well, you know all about that. How much more romantic all the affairs of your generation sound. I suppose it's because you had so many more principles. Oh, oh there they are. There's the car in the drive now. Oh. I say, Mother... What did Toby want? Do you know? Yes, I know. But I promised I'd let him tell you. Oh, Mother, don't be annoyed. Run and meet them. Uh, Roland's got his key. Is Gilly with her, by the way? Uh, oh, I don't know. Alex, darling. Aunt Liz, hello. Alex, I'm fine. <laughs> Evie, <laughs> darling, how are you? Oh, I thought we should never get here. It's hours late. Oh, Liz, it is nice to see you. Are you alone? Yes, all alone. Well, come in. Mr. Rowland will help with the baggage, Rose. Thank you, madam. Oh, come on, Rose. This one weighs a ton. Oh, oh isn't this fun? Oh, come on now. Let me look at you. Oh, Liz, Liz, it's terribly smart. Oh, darling, I was born in it. Filthy. <laughs> oh, you look very nice, Alex. <laughs> Pretty. Very West End actress. Thank you, Liz, dear. I'm terribly sorry, but I've got to dress to go out. But you're making a proper stay, aren't you? I'll mm. see you lots. Will you forgive me? Of course. She's sweet. She got a young man? Mm, she's got several. Anything serious? Well, I think there's a little situation on the horizon at the moment. Ooh, tell me. Another time. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, it's lovely being here, Evie. Oh, it's lovely having you, Liz. This is a nice house. 
There's something complete about it, something fulfilled. I don't know what. The life you led in it, I suppose. Just as you're a sort of complete person. What is it about you? Haven't an idea. Oh, Evie, it is fun to be here. You haven't changed a thing, but it's so nice. And spotlessly clean. Well, I should hope so. Well, after the mess of the villa, things collect on me so. Where's Mother? Gone to bed. Ah, that lets me off tonight, doesn't it? Don't you believe it. Have I got to go up? Oh, dear. Well, give me a minute. How is she? Quite well. Just the same. Well, how you put up with her all the time. And 75 on Thursday. Haven't got a present for her yet. Well, we'll go shopping tomorrow. Well, that's that. Well, there you are, Roland. Is everything all right, dear? Yes, I think so. I say, Aunt Liz, what have you got in that big suitcase of yours? Sand. <laughs> I want a drink. Will you have one? Oh, yes, please. I am making your work. Driving the car to the station, too. Roland tells me the chauffeur's got flu. Yes. Did Roland find you all right at the station? I looked where the men were thickest. Is that <laughs> she was surrounded. Here's your drink, Aunt Liz. Thank you. I was thrilled to have anyone so young and attractive as Roland to come and meet me, though. You know, he looks much too nice for a medical student. You never think that he knows all the disgusting things he must about women's insides. And you'd never think to look at their outsides that they would... How long have you still got before you know it all? Oh, about another two years. Goodness. We're as complicated as all that. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll go and take the car back to the garage. Thank you for the escort. Oh, don't mention it. Pleasure, I assure you. Nice children, Evie. Are they friends, Roland and Alex? Mm, brother and sister. Now, tell me about yourself. Where did you leave Gilly? Down south. Is he all right? As far as I know. I didn't know whether he was coming with you or not. Oh. Is anything the matter? I've left him. What? I've left him. Oh, when? Two weeks ago. Liz. Why? Well, I'd had just too much. You know what Gilly is, what he's always been. Women. Oh, they flatter him and he falls for it. He always says they don't mean anything to him. Well, if that's true, then why do it? What does it make me look like? And then if I complain, he tells me I nag him to death. Oh, Liz. Well, I do complain. We had a climax two weeks ago. Perfectly calm and reason. At least I was. It seems to me so obvious that if he cared for me, he wouldn't do it, knowing how I hate it. Well, he does do it, though he doesn't care for me. Well, that's all right with me. Don't you care for him anymore? I hate and loathe and despise him. Oh. It's true, Evie. Did you tell him you were leaving him? Yes. Well, what did he say? Swore at me and said good riddance. Well, I rather think it is for you. I know it is. Only wish to goodness I'd done it before. Years before, when his wife first said she wouldn't divorce him. I'm getting old, Evie. Oh, what rubbish. is not rubbish. Oh, look at me. What a sight I am. You look very nice. Is that why you went to Brussels? Yes. But why Brussels? Eve. Yeah. What would you say if I told you I thought of marrying again? I'd be very glad. Well, then, I think I am. This dear. Who? He's a Belgian, a widower. Are you in love with him? Oh, Evelia, you saw him. Oh, well, what's the matter with him? Oh, he's... he's funny. Oh, oh but he's kind. He's been a saint to me. He's enormously rich. He's got a place in the Arden and a house on the Avenue Louise. I've been there the last two weeks, staying with him and his sister. Did it mean you're living in Brussels? Oh, I shan't mind that. He travels a lot. You are fond of him. Oh, I tell you, he's kind. He's kindness itself. Yes, but the, the other side, the physical side. Oh, that. Well, can you dismiss it like that? Well, as if that makes any difference. Isn't that all that Gilly and I ever had in common, really? What good has it done us? Oh, well. Of course, if that's how you look at it. Oh, it's all very well for you, Evie. You had your husband, Henry. You loved him. It lasted for you. Lasted? Well, <laughs> you had him for over 20 years. Dear Henry. I know, dear. But you've still got your home and your children. What's my life been like since I left home? Egypt and the army with Fred, and all the bust-up of the divorce, and now these last ten years with Gilly. 
I want to marry and settle down and grow roots like you. Well, I never expected to hear you say that. No more did I. Oh, uh, excuse me, madam. Mrs. Venables is getting a little anxious. You see, she heard the car arrive and uh, she wants Mrs. Frobisher to come up. She's in bed. Well, I'm afraid we've been chattering. Oh, I told her you'd probably have lots to say to each other, madam. And she said she couldn't see why we couldn't say it up there. Well, well, yes, Mrs. Frobisher, as a matter of fact, she did. Well, we'll tell her we'll be up in just a minute. Very good, madam. Don't tell Mother all this about me just yet. No, of course not. Are the birthday celebration's going to be very grim this year. The usual, with perhaps a shade more trimming because it's 75. We're going to the palace. What's on? A musical play. How many of us? Eight. Oh, dear, dear <laughs> cousin Christopher's coming, I suppose. Of course. Is Christopher as attentive as ever? What a mother, do you mean? No, oh, to you, Evie. Has he ever actually asked you to marry him? Oh, gracious, no. Well, I'm sure I don't know why you two don't marry. I've told you before, I don't want to get married. When does our sister Nelly arrive? I'm waiting to hear her tomorrow or Wednesday, I think. How many of her frightful children is she bringing? <laughs> Only one, Christine. Oh, Christine. Is she bringing her husband, the professor? No, he can't get away. He's got a faculty meeting. Isn't that too bad? I don't know why you don't like Arthur. His socks come down. Give him some suspenders. <laughs> you won't wear them. He thinks they're effeminate. Oh, you've offered them? Nobody told me once. I hate hairy shins. <laughs> he always shows his front style. Well, well, Nelly likes him. I know. She used to think him romantic. Well, after four children and living in Newcastle among all those professors' wives. Mr. Chegwitten, madam. Oh, uh, good evening. Oh, uh, Toby, Alex is still upstairs dressing. She's got to go out. I told her you were coming. She won't be long. Oh, right. Liz, this is Mr. Chegwitten, my sister, Mrs. Frobisher. Mr. Uh, Chegwitten, I'm sorry. H how do you do? Where's Alex going? To a party, I think. Oh, I'd hope she'd come out with me. You, you, you didn't tell her. What's your news? No. Have a drink, won't you? Help yourself. Thanks. I feel a little drunk already. Excitement, I think. Of course. Oh, uh, spoke of a situation. Is he? Uh, partly. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, what does Mr. Chegwin do? Paint? or play or act or something? Well, he's just off to Hollywood. Oh, an actor then? Oh, nothing so ephemeral. I'm a picture director. At least I shall be there. Oh, has this just happened? Well, as a matter of fact, it was a film I made about six months ago. One of their men saw it and he's offered me a job under him. He's a director, Hagerman. He wants me to become his assistant director. Hello, Toby. Hello, Alex. What's all this about? Having secrets with Mother? We must go upstairs, Liz. Yes. Grandma's getting to the martyred stage. I just looked in on her. She said she supposed my dress was pretty. Oh, dear. Well, I'll see you in the morning then, Alex. Mm. <laughs> I'll be seeing you again, too, I expect, Mr. Chuckle. Uh, Chigwitten. I hope so. Good night. Oh, come along, Liz. Oh, I do hope Mother won't be too cross. Oh, you know what she is this for. So I took Liz upstairs to Mother's bedroom. And I got away as quickly as I could myself because I wanted to see if Toby's news had persuaded Alex to change her mind you know, about going out to the party with her other young man. To my disappointment and surprise, when I got upstairs again, I found that the other young man had already arrived. He was a suave young fellow in tails. He looked about 30. Oh, hello, Mother. This is Charles Hubbard, my mother. How do you do? How do you do? You've come to take Alex out? Yes, sir. Had a bit of a time getting here. I think we ought to leave. It's slow going tonight in the fog. Well, where are you going? My governor's giving a party. Oh, a theatrical one. Oh, I expect there'll be a few tame stars there. The old man still gets a kick out of them. He started playwriting late in life. I've enjoyed his plays. He does himself. It must be such fun to meet all the stars. Shut up, Toby. Come on, Alex, we're off. Goodbye, Mrs. Millward. Goodbye, and be careful, won't you? Rather. Good night, Mother. Good night, dear. Enjoy yourselves. Rather. Good night, Toby. Oh. Oh, come on, Charles. Right, dear. Well, Toby, had you a chance to tell her? Well, just. She'll miss you. I wonder. Oh, I'm sure she will. Three years is a long time. Yes. Well, what did she say? What happened after my sister and I left the room? 
She sat on the arm of the chair and put out her hand to me. I went over to her, and all she said was, What a mess you're in. You do want a haircut. And look at your tie. Here, let me put it straight. There. <laughs> That's better. Now then. Where are you going? To a party. Who with? Charles Hubbard. If you've got something to tell me, you'd better hurry. He'll be here any minute. Can't you chuck him and come out with me? I'm afraid I can't. That's a new dress. I know. Oh, Toby, don't be aggravating. What is it? Well, it's come. What has? A chance. Read this letter. What is it? It came this evening. Hmm? Toby. What do you think of it? Oh, it's marvellous. You're glad? Yeah. I, I'm delighted for you. Oh. What's the matter? Found a snag. Oh, f for me, not for you. What? Well, you're, you're going away for three years. Do you mind that? Of course I mind. Well, then, that brings me back to what I was going to suggest. What? You're coming with me. What, Toby? No, I mean it, will you? Are you serious? Of course I am. We've always said we'd get married one day. Well, one day, yes. But... Well, today's the day, or rather, sometime next week. Well, I think I can support you now. On this, don't you? Yes, 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 I suppose so. Well, then, Alex, won't you come? You know I love you, don't you? <laughs> well, you ought to. You and my work are the only things I do care about. Alex, us two together. Oh, Toby. You must give me time. Time? Give me a, a day to think about it. After all, Toby, I've, I've got my life and, and my work. Well, well, just how important is your work to you? It is important. I know it mayn't seem like that to you, the way you've worked for yours. I'm nowhere near where you are, nor whatever likely to be. I know that. But I am getting a foot in. Charles thinks there might be something in his father's new play for me. Oh. Not the lead, of course, but a real part. Oh, there is Charles. Look, won't you put him off and come out with me? I can't. Oh, really, I can't. Mr. Hubbard. Oh, hello. Have I kept you waiting? Fog's pretty bad. No, it's all right. Um, Charles, uh, this is Mr. Chegwitten. Uh, Mr. Hubbard. How do you do? I'm all right. Good. Charles, um, would you like a drink? No, thanks. We ought to go. And then you came in, Mrs. Millwood, and Charles and Alex went out to their party, and... Oh, I oughtn't to have told you all this. Alex would be furious if she knew. Promise not to tell her. All right, I won't, Toby. Thank you. Well, good night. I must go now. Good night. Oh, and my congratulations. Oh, hello. Hello, good night. Oh, manners, manners, manners. Really are the young people of today. <laughs> well, everything all right, Mother. Aunt Liz seems in very high spirits. Yes. By the way, Roland, did you notice anyone special at Victoria? Anyone with Liz, I mean. Oh, there was a little bearded so-and-so who kept calling Aunt Liz Elise and kept saying, a tanto, a tanto. I thought so. Why? Oh, nothing. She told me she'd come over with a friend. That's all. What was he like? Oh, dear. Flipping awful, I thought. <laughs> oh, by the way, when does Aunt Nellie arrive? Tomorrow or Wednesday. She's bringing Christine. Oh, that horrible child. I'm putting them in the spare room and Liz in Alex's. House full boards up for the next few days for the gathering of the clans. How frightful. You haven't a lot of family feeling, have you, Roland? I shall have a good deal less before the week's out. <laughs> well, as Roland put it, the gathering of the clans went on. And it was Wednesday when my sister Nellie arrived from Newcastle, bringing with her the child, the youngest of her four, Christine. And the less I say about poor Christine, the better. And then the great day arrived, Thursday, Mother's 75th birthday. As always, there was a birthday lunch at which we all ate too much, in particular Christine, but I said I'd forget about her. And then in the afternoon, Toby Chegwin started phoning to talk to Alex. But as Alex was out with Charles Hubbard, we told him to ring about six. But when he rang again on the dot of six, Alex had still not come home, which was a little worrying. Anyway, the others went upstairs to get dressed, and I felt sure she'd make it in time. I was just on the point of going up myself when I heard the front door open. And as I didn't want to pass through the hall just at the moment when Alex and Charles were perhaps, uh, well, saying goodnight, 
I waited till I should hear the front door close again. And that's the only excuse I can offer for eavesdropping as I did. The lull before the storm. You don't know Grandma's birthday. It seems to cause a lot of fuss. Fuss is Grandma's middle name. There has to be a special birthday dinner every year. Oyster patties, asparagus, cream sweetbreads and roast pheasant. The old lady likes her food. We usually end with Christmas pudding. <laughs> Good for Grandma. <laughs> and she survived it for 75 years. Look, I'm sorry to have to push you out, Charles, but I must dash upstairs to get dressed. What time do you dine in this household? Do people go and dress at six? On Grandma's birthday, dinner's at 6.30 sharp for the theatre at 7.30. Can she get through that menu in less than an hour? Just. She takes peppermints in a silver box for during the play. Wind? Wind. You know, this seems very unlike you, all this family stuff. I always pictured you as a bachelor girl. I wanted you to. You know, if one's got a home and a mother and a grandmother, it's apt to put men off a bit. Oh, I know what you mean. <laughs> I felt it the other evening when Mother told you to be careful driving me in the fog. Oh, no, I thought your mother was charming. How long has she been a widow? Five years. What was your father like? Mother adored him. You know, she, she ought to marry again, but I don't believe she ever will. Why not? Well, in the first place, she doesn't know anybody except widows. <laughs> We've a barrister cousin called Christopher, who I've always thought has a crush on Mother, but she won't look at him except in the way of kindness. And anyway, I, I think Mother is a one-man woman. That's the best kind, really. Cheapest in the end. Hmm? <laughs> and now, you really must go. Oh, Charles, this evening is going to be so awful. Six women and two men going to the theatre. Did you hire a shadowbank? No, I forgot. Oh, you must let me arrange it for you next time. I've got a pull with the hare and tortoise bus line. <laughs> You've got quite a lot of pull one way and another, haven't you? I'm trying to use some of it for you right now. How? With the governor, his new play. Oh, oh, lovely. I'm dining at home tonight, especially on your account, to have it read to me and tell him how good I think you'd be in it. Will he listen to you? Oh, I can do a lot with the governor. It's terribly good of you. I'm like that. I... Appreciate it. Then do you feel like giving me a kiss? On account. On account of what? Well, let's say of the day when you won't shut me out quite so much. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, now I must fly. Goodbye, Charles. Goodbye. And I'll let you know how I get on tonight. Tonight? Oh, about me. Oh, I'm not building on it. I think you've got a pretty good chance. I've been paving the way. Good night. Be good. So Alex went upstairs and I followed her. A little shamefacedly, I must admit. And a little while later, I heard Alex go down again and I hurried with my dressing to get a word with her before the others all assembled for dinner. But when I went into the drawing room... Oh. Hello, Toby. I didn't know you were here. I, I just came round, Mrs. Millwood. I, I, I want... I, I... Alex, oh. what's the matter? I think Toby's ill, Mother. Ill? What's the matter, Toby? Let me feel your forehead. My dear, you've got a temperature. Have I? Your hands are like fire. You ran, madam. Oh, I did, Rose. Yes, Rose. Ask Mr. Rowland to come down and bring a thermometer with him. Tell him it's important. Very good, madam. Alex, dear. Now, while we're waiting for Rowland, tell me what happened. Well, Rose told me he was here and waiting for me in the drawing room. I noticed Toby wasn't looking too well as soon as I came down. I say, Toby, you're looking awfully flushed. Are you ill? Ill? No. I've got a bit of a sore throat trying to get you on the phone, but I've been rushing. Doing what? Packing, mostly. Already? Why? Because I'm sailing on Saturday. What? The day after tomorrow. Toby, you, you said two weeks. I know, but, but Hagerman's been cabled for. Starts a new picture Monday fortnight. Wants me with him, Neville. Toby! I know it's a bit sudden, but could you do it? Me? You don't expect me to come on Saturday? Well, that was the idea. But you must be mad. Why? A two days' notice. Well, I'm doing it. But that's different. I don't see it. What is it? Charles Hubbard, after all. Not Charles himself. I see. But what he stands for, comfortable success, without any of the fun of having worked for it. I thought you liked the battle of getting there. I'm afraid of it. 
And you're not the girl I took you for. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't think I can. I've never seen this side of you before. I didn't think this was the real you. I thought I had the real you. <laughs> but if that's just a... I say, I feel rather peculiar. I, I, I'm sit down for a minute. Toby, you're ill. Well, I do feel a bit odd. <laughs> I've been doing too much. C could I have a drink? Of course. I, I'll, I'll ring for some brandy. I really do feel very strange. Then the door opened and you came in, Mother, saw how Toby was and sent for Roland. Got to go, you know, Mrs. Millwood. Whether Alex comes or not. Yes, of course. I, I've got to. I've got to. You do keep this house hot, Evie. I hate central heating. I'm not. You... Oh. Oh, I didn't know you. It's had... all right. This is Mr. Chedwood, and he's not feeling very well. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, no. Don't get up, Toby. This is my sister, Mrs. Fletcher. How do you do? But forgive the collapse. Oh, what's the matter? I should think it's flu. There's a lot about it. Oh, I hope my Christine doesn't catch it. What's all this? Who wants a thermometer? Toby, dear, he's not well. Oh, what's the trouble? Oh, yes. You don't look too good. What do you feel like? Cat's meat, if you want to know. Yes, but how cat's meat? Have you got a headache? A sore throat? Got any pain anywhere? I just ache all over. Hmm. Well, put this under your tongue. I always take the children under the arm. Well, that's one place, Aunt Nelly. You look very professional, Roland, I must say. Then perhaps you'll believe me now, Aunt Nelly, when I tell you that Christine ought to have her adenoids out. I hope my Christine doesn't catch this. Why? Is she be near him? No, but she... Oh, might... Well, then, children don't catch things if they're healthy unless you rub their noses in them. Christine's not very strong. Only because you coddle her. Oh, yes. Now then, Toby, let's have a look at your temperature. Hmm. What is it? Uh, have I got a temperature? Mm, it's up a bit. How much? Quite enough. You're going to bed. I can't go to bed. I'm sorry, old chap, but you'll have to. Yes, Roland's quite right. Have you got anyone to look after you in your rooms? I'm, I'm afraid not. Oh, then you'll have to stay here. I'll ring for Rose again. I would like to lie down. We'd better put him in your room, Roland. Do you mind? No, that's all right. I'll sleep in the study. What's going on here? What's the matter with him? Roland practicing on him? Did you ring, madam? Uh, yes, Rose. Uh, Mr. Chigwind is not well. He's got influenza. Will you make up Mr. Roland's bed for him and put in a hot water bottle? You can put the camp bed in the study for Mr. Roland later. Very good, madam. I'm sorry to be such a nuisance. You're not a nuisance. He just wants keeping warm. I'll give him something to get him sweating. Well, you'd better hurry up and do it. You've got to finish dressing. Come along, old chap. Can you stand on your pins? Uh, of course. Oh, gosh. Here. Hang on to me. I'll come and see you when you're in bed. It's silly of me. I'm sorry. Oh. I've never seen such a commotion in all my life. What's a bit of a temperature? And who's Mr. Chink and Poop anyway to make such a fuss over? Mother, the poor boy is ill. Who is he? He's a friend of Alex. Is she going to marry him? I really don't know, Mother. Apparently you hope she is, the way you're fussing over him. Really, Grandma, what do you mean? Oh, this will be that cousin of ours. <laughs> it is that cousin of yours. <laughs> I'm not late, am I? How are you, Eve? Hello, Christopher. Many happy returns, Aunt Lucy. I hope you'll be 75 a great many more times. Is that my present? It is. And there's a bottle of your favorite tipple in the hall. Oh. How are you, Nellie? Oh, fit and flourishing. Thank you, Cousin Chris. Hello, Alex. Hello, Cousin Chris. And here's a present for you, Eve. Oh, Christopher, orchids, how sweet of you. You shouldn't. Don't be silly, Evie. You know you were expecting it. Well, I... I <laughs> hope she was. I certainly regard it as my privilege. Hello, Christopher. Uh -huh. You're looking very distinguished. Oh. I always feel you ought to be wearing a decoration. <laughs> I don't know what I've done to deserve it, Liz. I think this night's work would earn it for you. Well, you know you're not looking so undistinguished yourself in that beautiful dress. Liz, is that what they call smart nowadays? Hope so, Mother. Oh, Evie, those flowers look lovely on you. Did Cousin Christopher bring them for you? Yes, he did. Oh, they are lovely, Evie. I can't wear flowers. They die on me. Flowers fade on flirts. Nearly, really. 
Well, here we all are, three sisters. <laughs> Eve, do you remember when we were children coming down to breakfast in the morning? How oh, yes. yes. Good morning, Grandmama. Good morning, Grandpapa. <laughs> Good, Good morning, morning Uncle, Uncle Joe. Joe. Good morning, all. Oh. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> All right, I'll go. <laughs> Hello? Hello, yes. Who is it that wants me? Who? Litchfield? Litchfield. Oh, isn't there a cathedral there? Gilly's father's one of the canons. Hello? Yes. Yes, is Mrs. Millward speaking? Who is that? Oh, hello. Yes, she's here. I, I, I just see. Hold on. It's Gilly. I'll come. What's that? Gilly? I thought you'd left him down south. Hello? Gilly? What do you want? What are you doing in England? Your father? When? But, Gilly, I... No, I can't. I'm engaged for lunch. I don't know. <laughs> Gilly, I can't talk to you now. I can't. Yes, well, ring up in the morning. Yes, I will. Goodbye. Well, what's it all about? His father's dead. He came over for the funeral. It must have been very sudden. He was barely 80. Gilly sent to his love, Mother. Wish to many happy returns. When's he coming to London? Tomorrow. Dinner. Come along, come along. Alex, go at once and fetch your brother Roland. He ought to be here by now. All right, Grandma. And Nelly, fetch your child Christine. Yes, Mother. Christine, come down at once. Now, come along, Liz. It's my party, and I'm not going to be kept waiting on my birthday. All right, Mother. Take my arm. Oh, dear, I wish we had a few more men in the family. Cousin Christopher, mm -hmm. you must bring Evie in to dinner. With pleasure. Now, come along, all of you, or we'll be late for the theatre. Will you take my arm, Eve? Yes, Christopher. Take me in. You look tired, Eve. I've had a lot to do. Well, you look worried, too. Are you? A little. What about? Oh, Alex and Liz and... It's nothing, really. You, you know, we've got a young man upstairs in bed with flu. You're pretty wonderful, Eve. Why? The way you deal with things. Don't you ever feel you want to run away from it all? Where to? Somewhere where you'd be the important one for change. No. You know, I don't, really. Oh, listen to Mother. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> And so a large dinner was eaten in what seemed a fantastically short time. And we all had indigestion, some more noisily than others. We all got to the theatre just as the curtain was going up and had to climb, all eight of us, over the audience to get to our seats in the middle of a row. Then after the show, by the time we'd queued for cloakrooms and got taxis and reached home, well, it must have been nearly 11 and nearly 12 by the time we'd had our nightcaps, said goodbye to Christopher and started climbing the stairs for bed. Roland, did you see if the telephone was switched up here into my bedroom? I did. Roland, Toby is all right. Oh, yes, Alex, he's all right. I thought he looked dreadful. He'll never be able to sail on Saturday, will he? The day after tomorrow. Well, I wouldn't advise it, but, well, you never know. Get his temperature down and he can. The illness frightens me. Well, I'll go to my improvised bed. How we do get pushed about. You were a very good boy tonight, Roland. Everything went beautifully. Thank you, darling. Well, it was a bit of a strain. I missed about half the show picking up things for Grandma. <laughs> well, she enjoyed herself. She has got a bawdy laugh. Darling. <laughs> well, good night. Good night, Mother. Good night, Pushface. Good night. Good night, Roland. Good night, Aunt Nellie. I'll go and get undressed and finish with the bathroom. All right, Alex, dear. Then come in and say good night afterwards. I will. Good night, Aunt Nellie. Night, night, Alex. <sighs> well, that's over. You must be tired, Evie. Oh, Nellie, I am. I'm so glad to get my shoes off. <laughs> Although you, you really can't have much to do. This house runs itself. I wish it did. I do envy you having a reliable maid. <laughs> I can't keep mine six months. What's this book you read in bed? Poetry. I didn't know anyone still read poetry. You don't mind my slipping into my dressing gown? Yeah, of course not, dear. I said, did you mark this? What? Uh, this. Yes. Why? I think it's rather beautiful. Oh. Yes. 
When, when you have tidied all things for the night, and while your thoughts are fading to their sleep, you pause a moment in the late firelight, too sorrowful to weep. The large and gentle furniture has stood in sympathetic silence all the day with that old kindness of domestic wood. Nevertheless, the haunted room will say, Someone must be away. Yes. But you can't be lonely. Evie, you, you don't know how lucky you are with all you've got. Oh, what wouldn't I give to have everything nice around me like you have? Yet I'd change places with you tomorrow, Nelly. With me? What have I got? You've got your husband. I sometimes wonder if I wouldn't have been better off without one. I'm tied hand and foot. You love Arthur, don't you? Mm, I suppose I do. But is that so important? I think it's almost everything. Love. Well, what it means to you. Oh, Evie, I'm so tired of it all. I feel it's all running away from me. What is? My life, like water. Soon I'll be old and have had nothing. Oh, I know. You think I'm a, a grumbler. I am. I'm turning into one. I hear myself doing it and I can't stop. You, you don't realise, Evie, what it does to you never to have quite enough of anything. Sometimes I almost wish I were Liz. She's wonderful the way she keeps young and smart. Who believes she was five years older than I? Looks the other way round. Oh, nonsense. You look very pretty, Nelly. Oh. You were always much the prettiest of the three of us. Oh, yes, if I could spend the time and money Liz does on massage and beauty preparations. <laughs> Though, anyway, I, I don't know what the use would be. There's nobody to see me in my part of Newcastle. And I believe they'd be shocked if I did look nice. But I just wish that I had the chance sometimes. That's all. Oh, Evie, may I come oh. in? Hello, Liz. Hello. <laughs> oh, I say, I don't know how we three sisters have put up with Mother all these years. May I smoke a peaceful cigarette in here? Have one, Nelly? No, thanks. I'm going to bed. Oh, don't run away. Uh, I must, I... Uh, Chris... Nelly. Nelly, dear, why don't you take a good rest in the morning and have breakfast in bed? Oh, I'm so used to getting up at eight, I doubt if I should sleep. Besides, Christine will be awake. <laughs> good night, Liz. Good night. Mm. How nice your hair looks. Good night, Nelly, dear. Oh, good night, Evie. Good night, Nelly. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> oh, Liz, <laughs> what's Mother been saying to you? Oh, she's been so difficult. What about Gilly? Yes, his telephoning was rather a surprise. It was. He wants to see me. Oh, well, you won't, will you? Do you think I oughtn't? Well, don't you? I suppose I oughtn't. I don't see why I shouldn't, though. Wouldn't it be quite fair to Marcel? We need to know. Oh, it is, really. I'm lunching with Marcel tomorrow. I, I thought if I saw Gilly afterwards... But have you any idea what he wants? You don't suppose he wants you back, do you? No idea. We wouldn't go back, would you? Oh, good heavens, no. Oh, Aunt Liz, I didn't know you were here. Oh, well, I must go to bed. I should probably lie awake for hours, but one's got to begin sometime. <laughs> Good night, Alex. <laughs> Good night, Evie. You've been very unhelpful. <laughs> Good night, Liz, dear. Well, I'll say goodnight too, Mother. Oh, but don't you want to stay and talk? Talk? Yes. What about? Well, about yourself. Shut the door a minute. Come here. Toby's asked you to marry him? Yes. And you've refused him? Not yet. But you're going to. Oh, I don't know what to do. But wouldn't you like to talk about it? There's nothing to say. Oh, Mother, I wish you could help me, but I know you can't. But why do you feel that? I loathe myself so. Alex, is there something you haven't told me? Well... Will you tell me? I... I can't. Why not? I don't want to hurt you. But, darling, you know there's nothing you can't tell me. Won't you tell me? Well... 
Toby and, and, and I... No, I, I can't. You've been lovers. Hmm. I see. Oh, Mother, I'm so sorry. Well, why are you sorry? Well, don't you mind? I want to understand. Why did you? I don't know. You loved him? I think so. I, I don't know. Oh, he, he was sweet, and then there was opportunity. Oh, we were together all the time. There seemed no need to look ahead. It, it didn't seem wrong then. Well, does it now? Telling you, it does. Even if you love him? Or you did? Yes, but now that I've got to decide, suddenly and forever, I don't know. That's why I, I wish we hadn't now. It seems so big a thing. Well, isn't it? It didn't seem so then. Oh! Are you angry with me? If you mean that. You think I ought to marry him? Well, not if you don't want to. Really want to. Well, marriage means my whole life. I feel there's so much I, I might be missing. Such as? Well, a good time here. Success, perhaps. My own life, m my job. What is your life but his life, if you love him? Besides, marriage is your job. Supposing it fails? Well, supposing your job fails. Are you still flirting with the idea of Charles? Well, a little. I have been. Oh, what he can give me. Toby knows that. He despises me for it. Well, I think he's right to despise you for it. You don't love Charles. You, know, you begin to make me doubt if you know what love means. Have you no capacity for caring for anything at all except yourself? I do care for Toby. But not enough to make your life... His life. I might as well say he doesn't love me enough to make his life mine. Why not? Because that's not the way things are. Because you're a woman. Oh, what's that got to do with it? Everything. Well, I think that's what being a woman means. To submerge yourself and everything you stand for in a man. To give everything to him. It isn't giving up. It's an exchange for something so much more enriching than anything you could have alone. And if he dies, what then? Well... Then your life is over. Oh, really? To all intents and purposes. Darling, I know what I'm talking about. Is your life over? The best of it. Your father was my life. I couldn't have asked for better. But you, your life's so full. You're interested in things. You read, you're fond of music, you like to travel. No. Life for me, I think for most women, means more than that. It means existing in someone else and for someone else. Well, if you believe that, then you must believe in Suti. Oh, no. You can't do that. You have to live your life out. Why, if your life's over? Because I think there's another kind of life that comes from inside you. After your own life is done. After your married life, you mean? After your own personal life. It comes from what you've made of it, almost like a reflection of it. But well, without it, you wouldn't be complete. Can you understand that? Well, yes. If you have a capacity, oh, mother. Alex, my <laughs> darling, no, no, there, 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 never mind. Oh. Oh, Toby, what are you doing here? I, I can't sleep. I had to come. I, I was too hot. Yes, but you've got to keep warm. You've got to go back to bed. I can't. It's too hot. You must have something round you, Alex. Go and get Roland's dressing gown. Mother, is he all right? He's all right, he's all right. Do as I say. Oh. Yes, all right, Mother. I've... Oh, I've, I've got to get that boat. Boat? She's sailing. I, I mustn't miss her. But she isn't sailing today. Isn't she? Well, what is today? Thursday. Uh, are you sure? I, I thought... Are you sure she hasn't sailed already? No, no, of course not. You... You don't mind my being here? No, but you must go back to bed soon. Oh, it's 
too hot. Here's his dressing gown, Mother. Give it to me, Alex. Now, Toby, I want you to put this on. I don't want to. It's too hot. No, it's not hot. It's a nice, cool dressing gown. Lovely and cool. There. There it is. Now the other arm. Now, see how nice and cool it makes you? Yes, you're right. It, it is cool. But won't you let me take you back to bed now? I'll have that made cool for you, too. Will you? You... You won't let me miss the boat, though, will you? No, of course not. Oh, well, that's all right, then. I, I, Alex mustn't miss it, either. She's coming, you know. I, I think she wants to bring a party. I believe I told her she wasn't to. Only, only you tell her she can. Who, me? Yes. You tell her she can bring anyone as long as she comes. We can get rid of them later. Only she's got to come. Tell her for me, will you? Yes, I'll tell her. You'll keep that other chap out, won't you? Yes, yes, of course I will. I, I don't want him. You know, Alex is awfully sweet, really. She's, she's silly sometimes, but that's because she's so young. Toby! Oh. It's all right, Alex, it's all right. I'm holding him safe. I'll take him back to his bed now. Uh, ring up Dr. Mackenzie at once and tell him to come round. Tell him what's happened. Yes, Mother. I went upstairs with Toby, calling Roland out of his bedroom on the way. Then Roland took charge of things for me and said he would wait with Toby until Dr. Mackenzie arrived. He told me not to worry and go back to bed. As I went downstairs again, I could hear Alex on the phone. Let me see, the telephone rings in Mother's room at night. No, no, she's not here. What is it? What's all right? The play? Oh, oh, yes. Alex! Only things are a bit difficult here. Do you mind if I ring off now? Yes, yes, all right. Tomorrow morning, half past ten. I'll be there. Goodbye. Who was that on the phone? It was Charles. He, he wants me to... But I told you to phone up Dr. Mackenzie. What do you mean? I was just going to, Mother, when Charles phoned me. Oh, well, give me the phone quickly. <laughs> I'll ring Dr. Mackenzie. Oh, Mother, it, it was so awful. I've never seen anyone like that before. We didn't know who I was. Alex, pull yourself together. <laughs> He's all right. He'll be all right. <laughs> oh, Mother, he's not going to die, is he? He's not going to die. Oh, she's not going to die. Don't be silly. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> is that Dr. Mackenzie? Yes, this is Mrs. Millward speaking. Millward. <laughs> Avenue Road, St. John's Wood. Yes. <laughs> Doctor, could you come round here? It's a friend of ours. She's running a temperature with influenza. He just got up and had a slight collapse. Yes. Oh, thank you, Doctor. As soon as you can. He's coming. Oh, oh, what shall I do? What shall I do? Alex, I think you might stop being a hysterical child and try and make an effort to control yourself and behave properly. I've had just about as much as I can stand today. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'll try. I'll be good. <laughs> All right now? Mm. That's it. Well, I'll go down and boil a kettle. <laughs> While I was heating a kettle, Dr. Mackenzie arrived, and I took him straight up to Toby's room. Early on Friday morning, the crisis passed. We went back to bed, and Toby's temperature came right down, so much so that when Dr. Mackenzie called about nine, he said Toby had better go to America on Saturday for it would do him more harm to stay here fretting. So round about lunchtime, while Roland stayed at home to look after the patient and get him up for tea, I went round to his flat and packed for him. Before I left, I looked for Alex or Liz to take one of them with me, but Alex had slipped out of the house to go round and read that part to Charles's playwright father and hadn't returned. And Liz, of course, was on her way to lunch with her Belgian so-and-so, as Roland would call him. Toby's flat was the oddest place. Nothing in it but a grand piano, piles of books, and a lot of drawings and travel posters stuck on the walls. When I got back, Rose told me that Alex was still out, but that Liz was in the drawing room with, of all people, Gilly.
Hello, Evie. Well, I... I mean, have you been here long? Uh, no, not very, Evie. I'm sorry I was out. Uh, it was Liz, I can see. Oh, oh, quite. Are you staying to tea? Well, I was just thinking, I, I don't feel awfully like facing up the old... Uh, I mean, your mater, if you don't mind. Uh, Liz, will you dine with me this evening? Well, uh, Evie... Would you mind if I went? Of course not, if you want to. All right, then, Gilly. Yes, but Liz, I think I'm entitled to some sort of explanation. I mean, after what you told me last night. Oh, yes, of course you are. Well, when I got back from lunching with Marcel, I found your son in here. He was supposed to be looking after Toby, I believe. Yes, yes, that's right, go on. Yes, well, when I came in, I found him enjoying 40 winks, from which I rudely awakened him. Roland! Oh. 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 Hello, Liz. Hello, Lazy Bones. Did I wake you? Have you been working, Roland? Oh, sleeping like the babe unborn. Oh, yes, I know. It's a disgrace. Where have you sprung from? I've been out to lunch. Oh, good Lord. What's the time? Well, by my wristwatch, I make it a quarter to four. Oh, blimey. I've got to get Toby up for tea. <laughs> Don't you think this wristwatch of mine's pretty, Roland? Oh, is it new? Hmm. You've been splashing a bit, haven't you? Don't suppose I'm all in myself. Aunt Liz, I'm shocked at you. Remember, men never give anything for nothing. That's all you know. Well, I hope it keeps good time for you. Roland, I don't like your tone. You're much too familiar with your aunt. My aunt's very pleased with herself about something. Where have you been lunching? At a hotel. What is the right time? Mm, oh, um, five past four. Well, perhaps you wouldn't mind if I asked you to occupy one of the other rooms in this house for a little while. I'm expecting someone. Oh? Oh, well, I'll go and get the patient out of bed. Mr. Gilbert Baines, madam. Oh, Gilly. Why, if it isn't little Roland? My, 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 but you've grown, why? Huh? Mm. Hello, Gilly. Hello, Liz. Well, you look very stunning. Well, uh, I'll leave you. Hmm. Nice of it. Well, Liz? Well, Gilly? Why wouldn't you lunch with me? I told you I was otherwise engaged. With the bra petit belge? Oh, Liz, you're not going to try and keep that up, are you? Gilly, darling, I don't want to be unpleasant. I'd like to point out something I don't think you've realised. What's that? I've left you. I've no intention of realising that. Oh, Liz, don't be a fool. Gilly, will you please leave me alone? Oh, Liz, listen, I'm sorry. I I, I know I was filthy to you. I apologise. I, I was tight. That's hardly a new excuse. You're going to begin again. Have you anything else to say? Quite a lot. But let's get friendly first. No, I'm perfectly friendly. Well, then give me a kiss. No, oh, I'm damned if I will. If anything to say, say it. Oh, I was sorry to hear your father was dead. Did you uh, see him? Yes, we had... Uh, Quite a chat. Did he forgive you? He was inclined to forgive. I told him we were finished. You and I, I mean. Oh, that pleased him, of course. Well, you know how he felt about those things. As a matter of fact, I rather gave him to understand, without actually saying so, that it was I who had left you. What? Well, I thought you wouldn't mind. It comes to the same thing in the end, and if it eased his last eyes... Well, you don't mind, do you? I mind a very great deal. Oh. Well, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what I can do about it now. What did he say? Well, he said that he was very glad I'd seen the light or words that effect, and uh, <clears throat> wouldn't I consider going back to May if she'd forgive me? Oh, May was there, by the way. And you said? No, I said, of course I'd consider it. May said she'd consider forgiving me. Oh, you've no idea the amount of consideration we worked out. The old boy went out wreathed in smiles. Oh, Gilly, you're more of a disgrace than... <laughs> and that's how you left it? Yeah. Oh, well, it's all very satisfactory, isn't it? When do you and May set up house together? I should think about the same time as you and Marcel. As a matter of fact, May is consenting to divorce me. What, sir? After ten years? Why? Well, I can make it worth a while now. Oh? You come into money? Mm, quite a bit. We had a long chat over the funeral baked meats. Am I a bit yellow about the eyes, by yes, the way? Yes, hmm? drank too much sherry. Yes. Always got on your liver. Yes. 
Well, anyway, we arranged terms for a settlement. She's filing her petition right away. Am I to be correspondent? No, no. No, I even got her to consent to spare you that. Oh, well, that was very nice of you. Well, I told her it'd make her look an awful... Oh, all right. Well, anyway, I should say that in something under a year, if you feel like it, you can be an honest woman again. Are you proposing to me? I suppose you might call it that. You're not serious. I was never more serious in my life. What do you... You mean you... You want me to marry you? I've always wanted you to marry me. When I haven't wanted you to go and drown yourself. Oh, that's a nice thing to say, too. I am serious, Liz. Yes. Well, I happen to be engaged to someone else. Just to spite me. How dare you? Oh, Liz, you can't marry that, that, that lump of cum and beer any more than I can go back to Maine. We, we, we belong to each other, don't we? Don't we? No, not any longer. Oh. Well, well then, the, the divorce is off. I'm sorry. Well, I, I, I thought it was marriage you were set on, and when this happened, it all seemed so easy. Are you fond of this... Belgian. He's been very good to me. Well, couldn't I be good to you? You've not been. Well, I would be. Oh, surely you know I'm fond of you, Liz. You've an odd way of showing well, it. Oh, I missed you like hell. It's been beastly down south. The villa's been frightful without you. Have you had fun? No. I had the most damnably boring time. Ah. Oh, but it's only because I'm not used to it. I intend to get used to it. Why? Because I want to settle down. Then settle down with me. Oh, back in the villa. Well, not if you don't want to. Where would you like to settle? Paris. All right. Gilly, you don't mean it. Of course I mean it. Oh, Gilly, why? <laughs> why? Why what? Mm. Why everything? Why do you do the things you do? Behave as you used to and then come back and be nice to me. Mm. You'll be just as bad again in a week. I know you will. You don't think marriage is going to change you, do you? Well, it may have a sobering effect. <laughs> if you really want me changed, that is. I don't want you changed. For all your tiresomeness. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've always thought how awful it would be to meet people in heaven that you were fond of on earth and, and find them all cleaned up with none <laughs> of the things that you like left about them. <laughs> all your old drinking companions gone tea tea. Oh, uh, Gilly, you are a fool. You know, it's true. <laughs> I mean, if you were sweet and gentle and uninteresting like Evie, do you think I'd still want you, even though she's got a far better character than you have? Why do you want me? Because you make me laugh and... And you smell nice. Oh, Gilly. And then you came in, Evie. I see. And now you're off to have dinner with Gilly. And what about Marcel? Oh, my goodness. Poor Marcel. Oh, come on, Gilly, quick. Oh. While we're having dinner, you can think that one out for me. Well, I say goodbye, Evie, and take good care of yourself. You're looking a bit washed, aren't you, now? I'm tired. See, Liz, I've been packing Toby's things. Do you like that boy? Yes, I do. He's got a kind of courage and determination. Oh, here's Roland bringing him downstairs now. Easy, does it? That's it, Toby. Jump the last dozen stairs. <laughs> Here we are. Oh, hello, Toby. Hello. This is splendid. Gilbert, this is Mr. Chegwin, Mr. Bates. How do you do? How do you do? Come and sit down, Toby. There's a good fellow. Oh. How do you feel? Oh. Oh, a bit like blotting paper. I know. Well, take it easy. Well, so long, Evie. I'll be seeing you. Do take care of yourself. Now, come along, Liz. Hello. You've got a new tick tick. Yes, it's, it's on that row. Have to go back now. Your things are all in the hall, Toby. Thanks. I've arranged to have your books packed and sent off to you. And I, I really can sail tomorrow, Roland. You're not just kidding me. Sure thing. You see, Mother, Mackenzie came again after you went out. He's arranged for a nurse to take Toby to Southampton and put him on board. She's coming up later. Oh, can I leave him with you now for a minute, Mother? Of course. Has Rose lighted the fire in the dining room? I said we'd have tea in there so that Toby can be quiet in here. You might remind her, dear, will you? Right you are. Ah, oh, Mrs. Millwood, I can't thank you enough for all your trouble. I I'm afraid the flat was in an awful state. 
What did you think of it? It's an interesting flat. Oh, dear, is it as bad as all that? <laughs> as a matter of fact, it's never been much more than a workroom and a storehouse. Have you never had a home? Well, not since I was about 18. I don't know that I've missed it, although being here has made me realise a lot of things. For instance? Well, differences between me and Alex. My life has been pretty well nothing but work and keeping going, with no sort of background to it. You've done marvellously. I can't imagine where Alex is. Roland said she went to read a part. But that was this morning. Well, I expect she went out to lunch or something. Well, she should have come back. Oh, I don't know. Has Alex hurt you? No, of course not. Why? I wondered. You see, she told me that you'd asked her to marry you. Uh, and she told you she wouldn't? Well, not quite that. Yes, but it comes to that. Would you mind terribly if she didn't? Yes, I'd mind, of course. But, but I've sort of been getting used to the idea today. You see... Oh, there you are, Alex, dear. Yes. Toby, you're up. How are you? I'm all right. Really? Are they going to let you sail? Apparently. Tomorrow? Yes. Oh. Well, how did you get on? Get on? Well, you're reading. Oh, yes, I forgot. Well, how did it go? Oh, all right. I think I, I can have the part if I want it. What have you been doing, Mother? Is anything the matter, Alex? I don't think so. What have you been doing since? Oh, shopping. Charles Hubbard rang up for you at lunchtime. Oh. He said, would you ring him when you got in? He's asked you and me to go with him to that first night next Wednesday. I thought it was very nice of him. Can you go? No, I don't know. No, I don't think I can. Oh. Well, if you'll stay with Toby for a little, I'll go and get ready for tea. Yes, of course, Mother. And that was the best I could do with making a tactful exit. Because I could sense that Alex had something on her mind and something that she wanted to tell Toby, which she didn't want me to hear just then. I looked into the dining room where Rose had lit the fire and where she was busy laying the tea. While I stood talking to her, I heard Mother go banging downstairs and stumping across the hall, and as I feared, she went straight into the drawing room. And it wasn't very long, I'm sorry to say, before I heard voices raised and high words. Oh, there you are, Evie, and about time too. What on earth is the matter? I'm afraid, Mother, I've been rude to Grandma. Oh, I'm sure Alex didn't mean... Alex didn't mean. I come in here and find her carrying on with this half-dressed young man. You may be interested to know, Grandma, that I'm going to marry this half-dressed young man. Oh, Alex. I'm sorry, Mother. I didn't mean to tell you like this, but it's true. I'm going with Toby to California, and, and what I was doing all this afternoon was getting my ticket and collecting my passport. What is all this about? Will someone tell me at once? Toby's going to America, Grandma, and I am going with him in the morning. In the morning? And when do you propose to get married? I really don't know, Grandma. On the boat, if we can, or when we get there. That doesn't seem to me to be very important. Oh, really? Evie. Are you going to stand there and listen to such wicked nonsense? I don't know that I think it is nonsense, Mother. Well, I do. I never heard such a thing in all my born days. Have you gone stark staring mad? Your own daughter tells you that she's going off to America with, 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 with goodness knows what kind of a young man. And it doesn't matter whether she gets married or not. Oh, no, she didn't mean that. I'm not so sure. But please, please don't go on like this, Mother. Alex is old enough to get married if she wants to, and I'm very glad she does. You can't interfere. You mustn't interfere. I mustn't interfere. Oh, very well. Now we know where we are. Oh, my own daughter turns against me. Grandma, will you please stop making a scene? A scene! A scene! And you let her speak to me like that, Evie? Please don't go on like this. Please, all of you. Oh, 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 this is what comes of her bringing Look up. Look what you're doing to him. Dancing at night That's clubs. That's all right, Toby. Hold going on, on the stage. Mother, take Grandma away. Tearing about with rag, tag and box. Mother, for God's sake, take Grandma away. Mother, for God's sake, you've encouraged her. Take I her away. I told you before, little girl. Mother suddenly took herself away. Up to her bedroom and we didn't see her again that day. She rang for Rose, who took both her tea and her dinner upstairs to her. 
Toby was none the worse for the excitement and ended by joining us for a quiet tea which we all took rather guiltily in the dining room. Final arrangements were made for the early start on Saturday morning and we all decided to have an early bed where I'm sure, especially after Thursday night's lack of sleep, we all slept like logs. Certainly the last thing I remember was the grandfather clock on the corner of the stairs with that old kindness of domestic wood ticking away the hours and striking ten. Good morning, madam. Come in, Rose. Good morning. It's seven o'clock. Here's your tea. Oh, madam, you're up early. Well, I've just been in to see Mrs. Venables. How is she this morning, madam? Surprisingly full of smiles, thank you, Rose. Oh. <laughs> Shall I draw your curtains, madam? Yes, please. Still dark outside. Oh, did you call Mr. Rowland? Oh, he's been up a long time, madam. I heard him go into Mr. Chequitton's room soon after six. Oh, good. He's going to the station with them. You'll be wanting your heavy coat, won't you, madam? It's cold out so early. I'm not going to the station, Rose. Oh, aren't you, madam? No, Miss Alex said she'd rather I didn't. I think she's quite right. Well, I expect she'll have enough to do looking after Mr. Chequitton. Do you think he ought to go, madam, looking like he did last night? It's a responsibility taking him so far. I think he'll be all right. Morning, Mother. You're up early. Can I come in? Yes, of course. Good morning, Rose. Good morning, Miss. Did you get some sleep? Yes, lovely. Eight hours. Nobody was more surprised than I was. Oh, I'm glad, Miss. Well, how do you feel, Alex, dear? Fine. Awfully calm, really. It's sort of funny inside when I think about it. But awfully important, too, as if I'd been put in charge of something. The war office, perhaps. Mother, you don't mind, do you? Well, I don't pretend I like you going away from me, but otherwise I'm very glad. You're responsible for it, you know, making me take the plunge. Oh, but I told you that last night. Oh, darling. Oh, it wasn't only what you said, but... When I saw you with him, treating him as if he were one of us, like Roland and me, I mean, it did something to me. I kept reliving that scene in here. Do you know, in a funny way, I felt jealous of you. It was like seeing someone else look after one's child and knowing that they had a perfect right to because one was so inadequate oneself. That's when I knew that nothing else counted. <laughs> now, let's have our tea. I've written to Charles. I know I've treated him rottenly, but I can't be sorry, really. I did my best to write sorry. Oh, here's your tea. Thank you, darling. Oh, let me know who gets the my part, won't you? It's the heroine's best friend, the one who gets told everything. Don't you feel anything about missing it? Oh, not now. I shall probably have a pang if she gets good notices, and, and a worse one, really, if she gets bad ones. <laughs> have you seen Grandma this morning? Yes. How is she? Rather chastened. Shall I have to apologise to her again? If she wants it, it won't do you any harm. No. Oh, Mother, poor you, having to go on putting up with her. <laughs> oh, it'll be all right. Morning, Evie. Hello, Alex, already. Very excited. Funnily enough, I'm not, Aunt Liz. I think I'll go up and see Toby for a minute. Oh, poor Evie. How do you feel? Quite resigned. I'm not in the least resigned. I'm very pleased. I imagine you had quite a bit to do with it. Not consciously. Do you think she'll be happy? <laughs> I think she stands a very good chance of it. Evie, can you bear another piece of news? I think so. I'm going back to Gilly. Oh. We're going to be married. Married? I thought it was his father who died. Was. But May is going to divorce him on the proceeds. Oh. And on ground supplied. Then we shall be married and respectable and the vicar will call. Or perhaps he won't. We're going round the world first. What? Then we'll probably get married in some outlandish place with a witch doctor or something. Well, you have fixed it all up. Ooh, ought we to have consulted you, the high priestess? Don't be naughty. I think we ought. Well, how long will you be away? Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, Evie, I never thought of that. First Alex and now me. Oh, poor darling. Come with us. Well, do you think Gilly is like that? Mm, suppose you're <laughs> right. Why haven't you got a man of your own? Would you like to marry Marcel? Well, do you think he'd have me? No, I'm afraid he wouldn't. He liked me because he thought I was dashing. <laughs> uh, you'll just have to stick to Christopher. Have you told Christopher about Alex, by the way? Yes, I rang him up. He's coming in to say goodbye to her. Well, Alex, darling, how's Toby? He seems all right. Roland's dressed him. Oh, isn't the nurse here? 
I can't amount it, sir. I'm taking Toby. Oh, well, really, you and your mother, there seems to be no amount of trouble you don't enjoy. I'd have had a fleet of nurses. May I come in? Oh, good morning, Grandma. So you are going, are you? Oh, it seems like it. Have you forgiven me, Grandma? Mm, I suppose I've got to. As it's probably the last time I'll ever set eyes on you. Oh, no, Grandma. <laughs> Three years, you said. You don't expect me to be here when you come back, do you? Well, now, where's your young man? He's coming down. Excuse me, madam, the car's at the front door. Oh, thank you, Rose. Will you tell Mr. Rowland, then? Yes, madam. Liz, dear, there's breakfast downstairs if you'd like some. Well, a cup of coffee would be nice. Yes, I'll go down. See you downstairs, Alice. Mm hmm. Alex, child, aren't you having any breakfast? I'll have it on the train, Grandma. Uh, I'd better get my hat. Back in a tick. Oh, hello, Alex. Oh, good morning, Aunt Nellie. How's your Christine this morning? Oh, ravenous. She's dashed down to breakfast. Oh, are you already very excited? Well, I suppose I must be by now. <laughs> I wonder when we'll see you again. Oh, uh, Christopher's arrived, Evie. Tell him to come up, somebody. Behold the blushing bridegroom. Come on, Toby. How are you, Toby? I'm doing as well as can be expected. Um, good morning, Mrs. Venables. Let's have a proper look at you now. You're dressed. Hmm. Do you approve? You want a haircut? Oh, yes, sir. I know that. Give you something to do on the boat when you're not being quiet. <laughs> We're all ready, aren't we? Yes, I think so. The car's here. Let's all go down. Goodbye, Grandma. Goodbye, girl. Oh, and Alex. What is it, Grandma? I know it doesn't seem important, but don't forget to get married. <laughs> I won't. Goodbye, Aunt Nelly. Goodbye, dear. Or are you coming down? No, I, I think I'll stay here with Grandma. Goodbye, Alex, dear. Oh, Aunt Nelly, I'm being married, not married. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Venables. You know, young man, I don't believe I ought to shake hands with you. <laughs> Still, I've got a forgiving nature. Goodbye. Goodbye. May I come in? Oh, hello, Cousin Christopher. We're just off. Oh, then I'm just in time to say goodbye. Bye, Cousin Christopher. Come on, Toby. Coming. Uh, goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Toby. Take care of her. I will, sir. Come on, Toby. Coming, Alex. Mother? Aren't you coming down with me, Christopher, to see them all? No, Eve. I'll leave you alone with them for the last few minutes. Thank you, Chris. Wait here with Nellie and Mother. I'll be back. Although I could hear Alex calling me and the car was waiting, I couldn't hurry down the stairs because saying goodbye to my dear Alex and not seeing her again for three years. As I got outside the front door, they were already getting Toby into the car and there was Alex coming towards me looking as pretty as I'd ever seen her. And then the strange thing is, I don't remember what we said or what we did. Here was the climax of our lives together and I remember nothing about it at all. I remember I had to ask Christopher about it afterwards. Well, I'm afraid, Eve, I didn't see them go because I picked up one of your books and uh, one of the poems in it caught my eye. But Nellie was over at the window, I remember. Come and look, both of you. Quick! Roland's just helping Toby into the car. Rose is out there too. I don't, I don't, don't see Liz. She's having breakfast in the dining oh. room. Oh, here's Evie now. Oh, oh, she's just kissing Alex goodbye. Oh, can you see them from there? Mm. Oh, they're just going. Evie's helping Alex into the car. Uh, I think Evie is very wonderful. If it were my daughter going away like that, I. They're just off. There they go. Well, I, I think I'll go back to bed. Goodbye, Christopher. Oh, you're reading? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, Aunt Lucy. What did you say? What you wanted to get up at the crack of dawn for, I can't imagine. Can't you, Aunt Lucy? <laughs> <laughs> Nelly. What are you crying about? I'm still alive? <laughs> the old lady's very bouncing this morning. <laughs> She likes a, a bit of excitement. Quite an upheaval on the distaff side. <laughs> You're a nice one to talk, Christopher, you selfish old bachelor. Oh, oh, oh. so that's what you think of me, Nellie, is it? <laughs> what, are you, what are you so busy reading? Oh. Oh, that's Evie's favourite poem. 
Is it? Mm. You bend your head and wipe away a tear. Solitude walks one heavy step more near. Oh, there you are, Evie. All right. Yes, of course. Uh, well, I must go down to Christine before she spills the coffee all over herself. Mm. Nice poem, that. Mm. Yes, it is. Sweet of you to come this morning. I wanted to. Has this hit you very badly, Eve? I don't think so. You're good at being lonely. I'm not really lonely. I always think of you as that. Well, that's where you make a mistake. Loneliness means there's something you want, some companionship you're looking for. And you're not? No. Perhaps if instead of loneliness, I called it, as in the poem, solitude. Mm -hmm. That's different. Couldn't I do something about that? No, Christopher. It's sweet of you. But that's something that just happens to one. And there's a kind of peace in it, really. That's what makes it different from loneliness. Loneliness aches. I believe you think of me as being unhappy. I'm not, you know. I think of you as being very lovely. Mm -hmm. That's dear of you. I've tried to let you know that. Wouldn't you marry me and let me help your solitude? Christopher, I couldn't. I'm terribly, terribly sorry, but I couldn't. I like you, you know that. I'm deeply fond of you. But marriage and all it means is something different. That couldn't happen twice for me. I wouldn't expect it to be the same. Even so, it just wouldn't be possible. I'm sorry. You're not angry with me? No. I've always known it, really. You'll come and see me just the same? Of course. I love being with you. Oh, and I with you. Would you like me to get along now? If you wouldn't mind. May I come in this afternoon? Oh, please do. Goodbye, my dear. <laughs> After Christopher had gone out, I sat alone a moment. The house sounded very quiet. Come in. Excuse me, madam, but uh, Mrs. Venable says, will you come in and talk to her? All right. Tell Mrs. Venables I'll come in a minute, Rose. Yes, madam. Nevertheless, the haunted room will say, someone must be away. And then I went over to my dressing table. And I picked up the photograph of Henry that always stood there, my favorite one. I remember looking at it for a long time and the words forming themselves on my lips. Our girl's all right, Henry. She's all right. And then I put the photograph down and I went quickly out of the room. Sybil Thorndyke has been starring as Evie Millward in The Distaff Side by John Van Druten. Appearing with Dame Sybil were Lydia Sherwood as Liz Frobisher, Jane Wenham as Alex, Griselda Harvey as Nellie Fletcher, and Mary O'Farrell as Mrs. Venables. Roland was played by Leroy Lingwood, Christopher Venables by Victor Lucas, Toby Chegwidden by Timothy Harley, Gilly by Ronald Baddeley, Charles Hubbard by Alexander John, and Rose by Barbara Mitchell. The play was adapted for radio by Raymond Rakes, and the production was by Graham Gould. The Distaff side will be repeated on Monday afternoon at 3.15 in the Home Service. Late night broadcasting this evening includes a word in Edgeways at 10 past 10 in the Home Service. On BBC One, there's a repeat of the science fiction series, Out of the Unknown, taken from BBC Two. 
Tonight, E.M.'s, uh, E.M. Forster's story, The Machine Stops, starring Yvonne Mitchell. Now from science fiction to the midnight movie on BBC Two, which starts at 10 to 12. Tonight, a Stanley Kramer production, Home of the Brave, starring Lloyd Bridges and Frank Loveday, Lovejoy. A story about five soldiers with different backgrounds on a special mission behind Japanese lines during World War Two. Now here's the weather forecast for tomorrow. Over the southeast of Scotland, eastern and southern England, the Midlands and eastern parts of Wales, it'll continue mainly dry, though with a good deal of cloud for much of the day. Bright intervals are, however, expected. In western Wales, northern Ireland, northwest England and southwest Scotland, it will be generally cloudy, and there will be a little drizzle in places with hill fog over the high ground, especially early and late in the day. A few bright intervals may occur during the afternoon. The northern parts of Scotland are expected to remain cloudy throughout tomorrow, and there will be some rain or drizzle at times, especially in Orkneys and Shetlands, where rain may be rather prolonged. Despite the rather large amounts of cloud over much of the British Isles, temperatures will be near or rather above the normal for mid-April. Outlook for Monday and Tuesday, some further rain at times in the north, but mostly dry in southern districts with some sunshine. Temperatures will be near the seasonal normal. This is the BBC Home Service. Here is the news read by Brian Martin. The Prime Minister said tonight that the government would continue to cooperate fully with every local authority, whatever its party. Thousands of Americans have been demonstrating in New York against the Vietnam War. The deaths have occurred of Mr Edward Redhead, Labour MP for Walthamstow West, and of Mr Balliol Holloway, the actor. A woman is helping South End Police tonight after the discovery of the body of a baby boy in a house. At Wembley, Scotland beat England by three goals to two. The Prime Minister, in his first comment on Labour's defeats in the county council elections, said tonight that no one would underrate the seriousness of what had happened. All those who had helped to bring about the results, not by their votes but by their failure to vote, would have to live with it for three years. Speaking at a Labour Party dinner at Hammersmith in London, Mr. Wilson said he wanted to make it clear that the welfare of everyone depended on cooperation and partnership between central and local government. As far as the Labour Party were concerned, this partnership would continue. They'd give every local authority, whatever its party, the fullest help possible. He said that last summer, when there was a need for urgent economic measures, he told his colleagues that he'd be prepared to sacrifice all Labour's lead in the opinion polls to get the economy right and he had never, never regretted the decision. To trim national policies for the sake of being popular during elections would be a betrayal of responsibility. It was a conflict which faced every government in every democratic country. The Labour government, Mr Wilson said, would make no change whatsoever in its plans to put the economy straight and to strengthen industry. After gov governing for 18 months on a majority of three without regard for elections, which could have come at any time, he wouldn't now be turned from their duty. The government had decided from the day they took office that the strength of the nation must come first and nothing that had happened this week would be allowed to weaken their efforts to achieve this. The former Liberal leader, Mr Grimmond, said today that the election results showed general dissatisfaction with the government's economic policies. If the government had any sense, they would now recast the selective employment tax to free the service industries and economise by giving up military commitments east of Suez. Voting has now ended in the week of county council elections in England and Wales. The last 19 counties voted today. Most of the results will be known tomorrow, but three will be delayed until Monday. At Merioneth, Cardiganshire and Radnor, where the results were declared a short time ago, there's no change. The independents keep control. The Labour Group on the new Greater London Council, now down to 18, 
has unanimously elected Mr. Reginald Goodwin as its leader. On the old council, Mr. Goodwin was deputy leader and chairman of the finance committee. He said tonight that the Labour members wouldn't be deterred by their small number. They'd cooperate with the Conservatives in anything which carried on the work they themselves had started. But they'd oppose any plans by the Conservatives to sell council houses. In New York, thousands of Americans have been taking part in a big demonstration against the war in Vietnam. A turnout of 100,000 or more had been expected, but it was estimated that there were between 30 and 60,000 at the assembly point in Central Park. Young people were in the majority, and there were contingents representing many shades of opinion from many different states.